When Deanna Slammons was a child, her father was diagnosed schizophrenic and her mother battled bipolar disorder and eventually took her own life. But what happened to Deanna and her siblings? The author joins us today with her incredible story. Welcome to The Harvest Show, Thank Deanna. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Wow, you know, when I was reading your project, I, I was just taken aback by everything that you had gone through by the time you were like 10 years old. Kind of mm -hmm. take us back to the time, you know, when your mother, when you remember your mother um, and what happened with her and your dad. Yeah, um, well, I was born and uh, lived in the western part of Pennsylvania and mm -hmm. we lived in government housing, so we grew up poor. My twin sister and I and my older sister lived with my mom and grandmom. Uh, at the time, at around three years old, my dad had left the family. He was dealing with his schizophrenia and moved south, and he was working in the tobacco fields, you know, in a fam our family on our dad's side in North Carolina. So it was just my mom and grandmom and my sisters and I uh, in this housing project, and my mom would um, go through her highs and lows of, of, of depression and being very manic. And actually, when she was manic, she was quite fun. If you know something about bipolar, just the energy mm -hmm. around having kind of a mania. And I just thought that she was like super mom. But then when she was depressed, that was really what got the best of her. Mm -hmm. She attempted uh, to take her life close to seven or eight times. Mm -hmm. And then finally she did, she jumped off of a bridge um, in the town there and she didn't die right away. She ended up in the hospital and died of a stroke, but you know, she was gone. I was seven years old, my sisters and I, um, and then it was my dad's sister who uh, came and got us and brought us to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And I, I grew up in, in the city of Harrisburg. And what happened with your dad? Because I mean, he, you know, he was not a part of your life, but uh, the saga continues with his Yeah, life. so my dad, when he was working in the fields, um, he actually was staying, you know, renting a place and got into um, kind of a bit of a, a beef with, with somebody there, and he, he stabbed a man, and he mm -hmm. killed him. Um, but what was interesting was when he was at the sentencing hearing, um, they played the 911 tape. My dad was actually giving the man CPR. Mm -hmm. And so it showed people in the, you know, in the courtroom there that he had a bit of remorse, that it, possibly it was something other than just a, a, a crime maybe of hatred or passion, um, that it was something that was going on. And when he got into prison, he said that was the first time he had ever gotten medicine for his schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then life really took a drastic turn for you, but, but God was kind of weaving it, weaving it together. Tell us about how you became a student where and where? Yeah, um, so, you know, shortly after we moved to Harrisburg, we were going to the Harrisburg Public Schools, and then my aunt, my dad's oldest sister, said, you know, there's a boarding school down the road. It's really less than 10 miles down the road in Hershey, Pennsylvania, Hershey's mm -hmm. Chocolate, um, Milton Hershey School. And it's a boarding school, and they'll take care of you. They actually give college scholarships. And um, I think she was just thinking we needed something a little bit better than being in the city. Again, we were in Harrisburg, and she was a single mom, as you can imagine, taking care of the three of us. Um, and she was barely making ends meet and taking care of us, and we were getting older. So we went to Milton Hershey School, and I enrolled when I was 13, my twin sister and I. Um, in the eighth grade into a student home. And when I walked into that student home with 10 or 11 other girls, it was the first time I realized I was home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and even being that. with strangers and out of anyone, family members that you, you felt that that was the place for you? I did, you know, we had um, meals where we sat down as a family. Things weren't chaotic. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very predictable. The house parents were very loving. Um, they prayed for us and prayed over us. I just felt like I was part of a family there. I also felt like I could be a kid again. I learned mm -hmm. how to play an instrument at the school. Um, I joined sports. It was something that we could never afford as a family uh, before. And so I just felt like I could have a little bit of my childhood mm -hmm. back. Uh, I gotta ask this, Deanna. How did you kind of process or, or work through you know, the tragedies uh, in mm -hmm. your early life as a child. You know what? I realized looking back that I was a very sad and lonely child. Mm -hmm. I was very quiet. Um, different people who know me, who look at me now, are very surprised at how outgoing I am. Um, yeah. I think I was traumatized. I know that my twin sister was as well. And so um, I bottled a lot of things up and I put up a lot of walls. And my sister, she lashed out. 
So the two of us were reacting to what we were going through in very different ways, but we, we were still um, dealing with it in a, a not very healthy way. So mm -hmm. I was just kind of shut down and, and closed in, very guarded for a while. But you came to Faith in Christ while you were a student there, right? I did, yes. I noticed my house parents just, there was something different about them. And I would ask them, what, you know, like, how do you do this or how do you just love us what's so special and and they said you know they had a faith in jesus i went to uh an acapella concert do you remember the uh music group glad mm -hmm. so they were an acapella group and i didn't realize it at the time that i had an ear for music just learning you know an instrument and everything love their voices and i'd gone to a concert there and they gave a, a call to accept jesus and i accepted jesus and then my house friends gave me a bible and and continued to kind of uh, work that out in my life with me and explain to me what all of that meant. Mm -hmm. And it had such a profound impact on your life. You now work there? I do, yes. And so <laughs> I graduated from Milton Hershey School. I went to Messiah College, which is in central Pennsylvania, again, just to kind of continue to grow in the Lord. And um, while I was at Messiah College, they have a Philly campus. I was studying film production. And my husband uh, was at Eastern College. We met at this church in North Philadelphia. Um, and he was a youth pastor, social work major, and um, we fell in love, and I told him about Milton Hershey School, and we visited at one point at the school and, and saw some of the kids there, and uh, on our drive back to Philadelphia, we were, I think, engaged at that point. He said, um, would you ever want a house parent? at Milton Hershey and it had never dawned on me mm. because when you go there your goal is to kind of, it's a stepping stone to mm -hmm. get out you know and your goal is to make better for yourself and mm. and to do things very different I never thought I had what it took to give back mm -hmm. because I didn't grow up in a home that was very stable now my husband his parents will be celebrating almost 55 years of marriage so that tells you the very stark contrast that we had um, and so we got married, and about four years after getting married, we started working at Milton Hershey School in 1999, and we house-parented for almost 15 years. And wow. how many sons do you have? About 100 that we <laughs> helped to at least um, go through our doors. Not all graduated, and not all, you know, are mm -hmm. we in touch with by far, um, but we probably touched the lives of, of almost 100, 100 boys. That's amazing. And, and did you find yourself being able to really relate to some of the backgrounds or circumstances that, that these uh, You know, young I, I did. Down? You know, there were quite a few um, boys who didn't have dads, but there were some who had lost their moms, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to certain circumstances. And even ones I can think of now who are still in the school who lived, are growing up down the street from where my house was, you know, and we talk about the neighborhood and is it still the same? And is that supermarket still there or the corner store? Mm -hmm. And so. Um, I can still relate to them and just kind of the contrast of I know what their life was and I know what their life is now and, and kind of the blend that they're mm -hmm. experiencing because that's what I experienced. Well, you've chronicled your own personal story in your new book called Faith's Pursuit, Understanding God's Faithfulness in Suffering. And you have certainly gone through quite a bit. What, I mean, is it's a huge question to ask. What have you learned about God's faithfulness in, in suffering? But try to tackle it. Okay, well, I know that he is faithful. And mm -hmm. so I wanted that word to be written in the title of the book. And it's interesting, we named our daughter, Corey, Corey Faith. Mm -hmm. And she's actually the one who would ask me over and over, Mom, why did you have to go to Milton Hershey School? Tell me about how you grew up. And she was so curious at five years old. And I actually decided to write the story for her. Mm -hmm. I dedicated it to her because she had so many questions about mental illness and, and I didn't really want to get into it, you know, all the times that she wanted to, to talk about it. So I penned my story for her and dedicated it to her. And I had this aha moment um, when I began to write it. I was 35 years old when I started writing the book and she was seven. When my mom died, she was 35 and I was seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I looked at my life and it was so vastly different than hers. It had to be God's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. What else could I attribute to why I had landed in such a different place than she had? You know, knowing all of what I had grown up with, he stepped in. And I can look back at my life and all the times where, you know, I had experienced different things that were disheartening or heartbreaking. And I look back and I see when he moved me out of the way. Mm -hmm. or he put me in there, but maybe he sheltered me or covered me, or he spoke a word over me. And at the time, you know, you're just kind of processing it and you're in shock, but when you look back, and that's one thing I wanna encourage our viewers, is to look back at the times that he's faithful. And mm -hmm. even in the Bible, 
um, many biblical leaders will do that. Remember, and God you know, mm-hmm. says, remember my faithfulness. And different leaders will call the nation of Israel to remember his goodness. Because at the time we forget, we're just living in that moment of fear, yeah. mm-hmm. perhaps, or, or lack of trust. But it's when we reflect. So this book was a huge piece of reflection for me. It was the first time I had ever paused and said, okay, what was that? Mm -hmm. (laughs) That was my life, my childhood, my Mm -hmm. growing up years, uh, house parenting. What all, what does all of this mean? But suffering is such a hard thing to endure. Yes. When you, when you think of that, I mean, but it does something to you. It builds something in you, doesn't it? It is. It is so interesting. And I don't know why God uses suffering. Maybe Mm -hmm. it's because it gets our attention. Maybe it causes us to pause. Um, But it is through suffering. It is through that bruised reed. It's that, um, I always think of the, a rose has the sweetest smell when the petals are crushed. When you rub them together, you get that mm-hmm. scent and that aroma um, to it. There's something in that, in that breaking um, and having to rely on God, the humility um, that brings forth something um, vastly different. And he is the artist of, of being able to sculpt that in the lives of, of those of us who have been through quite a lot of hardship. So when someone reads Faith's uh, Pursuit, what would, what's the takeaway? What do you want them to walk The takeaway when they read Faith's Pursuit is, you know, to hold on. God has a story for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really taken back when um, a sister, sister-in-law of mine said, I think I'm going to give my book to a friend who is struggling with cancer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I really didn't think that my story <laughs> Related to somebody battling cancer, you know, I I, I share quite a bit of of just my own childhood and poverty and and disappointment, but cancer is not one of them, Um, but was very taken back by that, how universal suffering can be, but also how faithful God is in it. He speaks in our hearts. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us, Deanna. Mm -hmm. To connect with Deanna, go to DeannaSlemons.com or go to Harvest-TV.com for a link to her new project, Faith's Pursuit, Understanding God's Faithfulness and Suffering. Coming up later, Pastor Hugh Halter 